Christ is still risen, my friends. Thank you for worshiping with us today online as we continue our celebration of Eastertide with the Acts of Faith community based in Rochester, New York. How have you been experiencing the risen Christ in your life this last week, huh? Hopefully, it's been a joyous time for you to unfold and become familiar with a newer and deeper manifestation of, well, God's love in your life. We sure do need it in the world today, don't we? Today we're going to take a look at faith. Questions, doubts, and how they all come together to lead us to grow in our relationship with the sacred in our lives. Our centering question for you to consider, ponder, or maybe discuss with others is this. In general, do you think questions are a good thing or a bad thing? What makes the difference? Ready? Pause. As we continue to celebrate the Easter season, we call ourselves to worship. Please join me by reading the bold print as you see it on your screen. Praise our God who brings life from death. Praise the God of resurrection. Praise Yahweh for his strength and greatness. Praise the God of resurrection. Praise our creator with trumpet, harps, and lyres, with tambourines and dancing. Let everything that breathes praise the one who brings new life, new possibilities, and new awarenesses. Praise the God of resurrection. Let's now join Andy with our opening hymn. Andy. Hallelujah. 
Easter has changed everything. And if we let it, Easter can change us from the inside out. Will you pray responsibly with me as we realign ourselves to God's resurrecting spirit? We hear you calling, O spirit of springtime. How can we keep from singing? That Jesus Christ is risen, bringing healing and forgiveness to all. Whether we have seen or believe without seeing, we have found life in his name. The risen Christ is among us here and now. Must we see you in order to believe you, Jesus? Seeing is truly believing. Are we to be prisoners of our senses, distrusting and rejecting whatever we cannot see, touch, or hear? You are faithful, in spite of how we hold ourselves back sometimes. In you give sight to the spiritually blind. You carry us when we are weary. You call us to your side. You appear in the locked room of our hearts, and we don't know how you get there. Lead us to ask for what we need in order to believe, and grant us the ability to recognize your answers to our questions. For we know that we fall short of treating others as if they were you in disguise, and we know that you are here among us. Let us truly embrace that believing is seeing, rather than seeing is believing. Sisters and brothers, throughout the scriptures we are reminded of the Spirit's promises. Jesus is risen from the dead. Seen or unseen, he is present in our midst. And we see the presence of Christ reflected in each other's faces. Happy are those who question and doubt, for they shall receive the answers they need. Happy are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Christ is among us. Alleluia. Good morning. We know the resurrection stories well, but what happened in those first hours and days following that? Today's reading picks up the story as we read together John chapter 20, beginning in the 19th verse. Let's proclaim the good news together. I invite you to read the bold print when it appears on your screen. Later on that day, the disciples had gathered together but fearful of the temple leaders, they had locked all the doors to the house. Jesus entered and stood among them and said, Peace to you. And then he showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples, seeing the teacher with their own eyes, were awestruck. Jesus repeated his greeting, Peace to you. Just as God sent me, I send you. Then he took a deep breath and breathed into them. Receive the Holy Spirit, he said. If you forgive someone's sins, then they're gone for good. If you don't forgive sins, what are you going to do with them? But Thomas, sometimes called the twin, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came and the other disciples told him, we saw the master. And he said, unless I see the nail holes in his hands, and put my finger in the nail holes and stick my hand in his side. I won't believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the room and this time Thomas was with them. Jesus came through locked doors and stood among them and said, peace to you. And then he focused his attention on Thomas. Take your finger and examine my hands. Take your hand and stick it in my side. Don't be unbelieving. Believe. Thomas said, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said, So you believe because you've seen with your own eyes. Even better blessings are in store for those who believe without seeing. This is the word of God for us in this Easter season. Thanks be to God. 
We all have moments of question and doubt. If we are certain of everything, it wouldn't be called faith. So let us sing together, Andy. Faith begins by letting go, giving up what had seemed sure, taking risks and pressing on, though the way feels less secure, pilgrimage both right and odd, trusting all our life to by holding on, keeping memory's roots alive, so that hope may bear its fruit, promise fed our souls will thrive, not through merit we possess, but by God's great Matures by reaching out, stretching minds, enlarging hearts, sharing struggles, living prayer, binding up the broken parts, till we find the common place, ripe with witness to God's grace. You know, there's an old saying, seeing is believing. But I'd like to suggest that it's really the other way around. Believing is seeing. We see things that reaffirm what we already believe. Most of us do that anyway. Or, as I've heard said, if you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. <laughs> It's true of teachers, I think, everything becomes a teachable moment. <laughs> it's true of ministers. When, when I first began living into my call, I noticed every single church in every town that I drove through and craned my head <laughs> to see which ones were Presbyterian. If you're traveling abroad, you tend to look for other Americans. What we are looking for shapes what, what we will see, how we will interpret what happens to us. If we believe that people are basically bad, then we notice everything that can possibly go wrong. If we tend to cheat on our relationships, that's the first thing we think about other people doing to us. If we lie a lot and try to manipulate, we think everyone is doing that. We ascribe that value to others because we believe that, that that's how the world operates. Believing helps us to see that what we believe is true. It works both positively and negatively, which is why it's so important for us to have a positive mindset, to give others the benefit of the doubt, to cut them some slack. People who believe in us totally shape who we are and how we move through life. But what do you do when you don't believe somebody? What do you do if there's something you really want to believe, but you can't quite get to that point because of something that's standing in your way? Well, that's kind of where Thomas found himself in today's reading. All of his friends had seen the risen Jesus, or so they said. He wanted to believe that too, but for whatever reason, he just couldn't quite get there. Now, I just have to say that most people throughout history read the story and they think, oh, poor Thomas, if only he'd believed more. I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to be a doubting Thomas. But I look at it and then I say, wow, good for Thomas. 
He knew what he needed in order to believe. And he said it. He had spent the last three years traipsing around the desert with Jesus and the others, right? He believed in the teachings of his rabbi. Jesus was his mentor, his friend, part of his chosen family. He wanted to believe that he was not dead. But he just knew himself. <laughs> he knew that he needed to see the holes in Jesus' hands and his side in order to dispel his doubts. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? I happen to think it's a good thing. And you know why? Because he is the only one who said exactly what he needed in order to believe. And he got it. He got it. He got the reassurance he needed. Eight days after giving voice to his doubts, eight days after saying out loud what he needed in order to believe that Jesus had risen, who appears and gives him just that? Jesus. Think about that. What a great example of God listening to us. And here's the deal. Jesus wasn't there when he said it the first time. So how did he know what Thomas needed? Because Jesus knows what we need. And Jesus shows up. He comes in through a locked door, nonetheless. He appears. And Thomas is there when it happens. And he holds out his hands for Thomas to touch the nail holes. And does he? Does Thomas? No. He just falls to his knees and says, My Lord and my God. In other words, it was enough. It was enough to know that he had been heard and that it was real. And that Jesus found a way to get through to Thomas in a way that he could understand. Jesus cared about Thomas. He loved Thomas enough to show up and, and offer him exactly what he needed in order to believe. I have to, I have to really believe that he'll do that for me too, or for you, for all of us. You could say that Jesus showing up proved that seeing is believing. Yeah, Deb, look, he saw and then he believed. But I prefer to see it as Thomas's desire to believe. His articulating what he needed in order to believe. And that allowed him to see what was there. Believing is seeing. Of all the people in this whole Jesus story, it is Thomas who says what he needs in order to believe. And Jesus gives him exactly what he asked for. All the people. It's Thomas. Now, someone asked me the other day, yeah, but what about the whole don't put your God to the test thing? So I want to remind you of another one of my favorite stories, this one in the Old Testament in Hebrew scripture. It's about a man named Gideon. Now Gideon was supposed to lead his soldiers into battle for Israel, and he wanted to know the exact day and time. And so he said to God, okay, how about if I lay a fleece, you know, lamb's wool, on the ground, and when it's wet in the morning from the dew, I'll know that that's when we should attack. So he did it, and the next morning the fleece was wet. But then Gideon realized, well, that wasn't too smart, because the ground is always wet in the morning from the morning dew. And so he went back to God, and he said, okay, wait, wait. How about if I lay the fleece down at night? And when the ground is wet, but the fleece is dry, then I'll know we should attack. 
and God agreed. When that day arose and the ground was wet and the fleece was dry, he led the Hebrew army to a great victory. It's not about putting God to the test. It's about asking God for what we need in order to deepen our relationship with God. We do that with each other all the time, right? We build trust. We, we get to know each other's ways. We tell each other what works for us and what doesn't. We say things like, I really don't like that kind of joke, or I really love playing tennis with you, or if you have to eat that, could you not eat it around me? I mean, what's the difference here? God wants to be in relationship with us. Jesus wants to be in relationship with us and was already in relationship with Thomas, right? The Spirit wants to help our ability to believe. But it's up to us to invite that Spirit into our lives in a way that has meaning for us. It's not putting God to the test when we are asking for that help. Gideon was asking for help to know when to attack with his army. Thomas was really asking for help to believe. And believing is seeing. Thomas is my hero. He said what he needed in order to believe, and it was given to him. And once Jesus showed up, that was enough. He didn't need to touch his hands and his side at all, even though he thought that's what he was going to need. He knew he had been heard. He knew that even though Jesus hadn't been in the room, even though the doors were locked, Jesus found a way to get to him and give him everything he needed. The same can be true for us, my friends. But we have to know what to ask for. What do we need in order to believe more? What do you need? And then, can we be brave enough to ask for it? If believing is seeing, we have to believe that we want to believe. We have to be brave enough to do whatever it takes to enhance our belief. And that just might mean owning up to what we don't believe. May we all become more like Thomas. And may God make it so. Amen. Well, we have listened to the word. We have received God's love. We have received our life. Now is the time for us to give a portion of all that we have received back to God. We can do that electronically by looking at the website at the end of this video, clicking on the donate button, or by lifting us up in prayer. Either way, let us present ourselves and our offerings at this time. and prayer of dedication. Day by day, O oh God, we long to see thee more clearly, 
love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. Receive these gifts and promises, for we dedicate them to you for your use, as we dedicate our lives to your service in the world. Help us to believe the world to be a better place, and in so believing, let us see that it is so. Amen. Let's prepare for our prayer time together, singing Kumbaya, Come By Here. Andy? There's so much we need to pray for in the world, isn't there? Of course, one of the drawbacks to being on video is the timeliness of it. Things are moving at such a fast clip in our lives, in the life of our nation, in the life of our planet, global states. There will be a section of silent prayer during today's prayers of the people and I invite you in that space to lift up whatever is currently weighing you down let us pray together O risen Christ you who appeared to Thomas and the others you who show yourself to us every day through the love of family and friends, through smiles of strangers, through generous acts that we see played out before us. Help us to believe just enough that we can see you. Help us to believe just enough that we can dare to ask you for what else we need in order to believe more. Holy God, this is such a tenuous time in our lives, it feels anyway. While we bask in the 
the glow of the resurrection and our Easter celebrations, our hearts are heavy with family, community, and world events. We lift those up to you now and ask that you transform them, that you bring your Holy Spirit into the world in such a way that all things become fresh and new. And that in the meantime, until that comes to fruition, that you give us the courage, the strength to keep believing that we might then see the best that's going on around us, see the little glimmers of light that you are sending into this world. Hear now our silent prayers. Oh God, in this holy season of change, so much change in our world within ourselves, our friends who need support, those we know who are aging, those we know who are about to launch and become independent adults, those who are approaching an end of a school year at whatever level, those who and we can name them ourselves. Every one of us is going through change of some sort. And we give thanks that you demonstrated for us the greatest change of all through the resurrection of our teacher, our mentor, our friend, our guide, our brother, our savior, Jesus, who became the Christ. Watch over us and keep us on the path, we pray. And hear us now as we pray with one voice, as he taught us to say, praying. Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so, my friends, Easter tide continues. It lasts for a few more weeks. Let's keep that sense of new life, new possibilities, new hope of light exploding in our lives, of resurrection. Let us keep that alive as we ask God for those things that we really need. And let's sing together, Thine is the glory.
So you know what I'm going to say probably, right? Figure out what you need in order to believe. Focus on that this week. Don't be afraid of it. If we can focus on it, if we're really honest with ourselves, we say, you know, I'm not so sure about this. I'm not so sure about that. Can you help me to believe anyway? Believing is seeing. The answers will come to us. Maybe not in the way that we expect. But we have to keep alert and keep looking. Believe and know that God wants us to believe more. And with that, I invite you to go with God, walk with Jesus, and live in the Spirit this week and every week, now and forevermore. Amen. Have a great week, everybody. We will see you back here next time, which will be a service of Holy Communion as we begin the month of May. Hard to believe, isn't it? I look forward to seeing you then or perhaps during the week, during our prayerful pause episodes, Monday through Friday, also on YouTube. And until then, God bless, take care, and bye for now. Andy? Thank you for joining us today. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here, and we are glad that you chose to worship with us. We are grateful for your prayerful support of our ministries. We are a small congregation of about 50 members in upstate New York, but now we find ourselves growing to include some of you in North Carolina, Connecticut, Florida, Kentucky, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and other parts of New York State, and maybe other places that we are not even aware of. All of us united by the spirit of the living and loving God. If you are watching this, we already think that you are part of us, and we would love to hear from you. Should you find yourself in the Rochester, New York area, we would welcome you to worship with us in person please check our website calendar for the nearest location.
If you would like us to pray for you, please send those joys or concerns to me through our website, which is noted at the end of this video. More worship services, as well as our weekday meditations, prayerful pause with the pastor, can be found on our YouTube channel, South Church Rochester. If you are in a position to help support us financially, your gifts may be sent to us as seen on your screen. We hope that you have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you back here again. Just remember, transform your spirit, transform our world. Okay, God bless, and bye for now.